Hi sketchy friends, my name is Sandra Juho. I live in Switzerland. I am a mixed media artist and um, I typically use lots of mark making and layers in my pieces. And in this tutorial I would like to show you my process of creating an abstract piece based on a non-abstract inspiration. In this case a photograph of a landscape. And I'm, I really love being outside in nature, going for walks with our dogs and kids and I'm taking top photographs of color combinations or colors that I really like that I see in nature or textures, shapes, line work, whatever catches my eye. and bringing these back home into in my studio and let it influence my my work. These are the supplies I use in my piece. I like to work in mixed media so <laughs> there are lots of art supplies I'm using. I've got color pencils, grease pencils, the china markers, Graphite. Um, I like to use gesso to prime my paper to protect it from my rough <laughs> mark making. The matte medium to thin out my paints. I use this heavy body acrylics and mixed with the matte medium I can achieve th uh, thinner layers. My brushes, I use different sizes and different shapes. This is a very soft one. This I use for mark to scratch into the paint and for mark making to mix paint or get the paint out of the tube. This is a water soluble, a graphite stick water soluble. I really like this one. Then an oil stick. Sometimes I use them in my very last layers to create a special effect or a special extra. Or before I go over with um, watercolor because it gives this uh, nice effect. The oil repels the water. Then the neo color tubes. These are also water soluble pastels. I like them in my first layers when I play around and in my last layers to make some marks. Some oil pastels. This is also water soluble Stabilo Woody. Water of course, sandpaper. I like to add media but also subtract media. A prayer. These are my watercolors. It's the it's from tubes I filled in here in this little container. I can take it with me outdoors when I'm painting outdoors. I really love them. And these are some of the colors I, I chose. I really like the granulation of the paints. My acrylics, yeah, and the paper I'm working on is this Kenson watercolor paper. It's 300 grams and 
I'm taping it on a foam board. I use both sides because I like to work in series on, on several pieces. When one is drying, I can start working on another one. When I start a piece, um, I lay out all of my paints in good reach and sight, so I can decide intuitively what, what I need and have it handy. I need to push it up a little bit so you can see. I tape it on the board and then I gesso it. I like this very used brush because I really like the texture I get from it and I like this part a lot because it warms it warms me up it warms my hand up I get familiar with the paper and the media and it kind of calms me down it's quite meditative and I find it influences the look of the piece how you apply the gesso so I like to have movement in my pieces and textures so I'm really yeah scrub it in and leave marks And what I do is I paint over the tape so the color, the different color is not distracting me so much. I have been working on a series of abstract paintings uh, with the theme of the four elements. I finished water, uh, fire and air and in this tutorial I would like to show you earth, how I create earth. When it comes to inspiration I like to use my own photographs. I take during my walks with the dogs and kids in nature or in the forest or of course sketchy is a fabulous resource for beautiful inspirations and muses where you can draw from for earth i would like to use one of my own photographs i took in costa rica this picture really says earth to me. There's trees, there's greens, browns, warm colors, the sea, there is mountains. And I'm feeling very inspired by this picture. And I have some amazing memories I have been living in the jungle and spending time on the beach and yeah, I would like to transport that feeling in my painting. So I printed it out because I prefer to work from, uh, not to have to look at, at the screen, I prefer to work from paper. 
I printed it out, it changed the color a bit, but it's okay. And when it comes to mark making, I'm very inspired by bark tree, barks of trees, the structures and these, um, these forms, um, shapes you see here. And that's kind of what I try to um, integrate in my painting, in my mark making. What, what I'm doing is I'm squinting my eyes to see um, the weight. So how, where's the weight of the picture? The, where are the colors on the picture? And I oftentimes rotate um, the photograph so that my that I'm not focusing on what I see there a tree or the sea or hills or whatever is on the picture it kind of tricks my brain and eyes to concentrate on on the shapes the colors color fields the the darks um, and the lights and I'm trying to replicate or mix the colors I see in the picture for this I made a color chart these are all the acrylics I own and that I'm using here and it helps me to to get a clue what colors to mix so I copied it and made it a little bit smaller so when I have the colors here then I can see this peachy color could be the connected on nickel azo this color with white Th this on this side there are all the colors mixed with each other Here's with mixed with white and with black. So I can, yeah, kind of orientate. And I really like to mix my own colors because I find it very, it's calming and kind of satisfying to create your own colors. And it, slows me down in my process of painting and helps me to just be in the moment and enjoy it. So when I start, I like, I like to start with, uh, with writing. It can, anything that's, uh, that's in my brain or I, like a positive affirmation for this piece. So I'm writing Earth. Enjoy the process. In Swiss German. <laughs> Be in the moment. Have fun. Just 
just whatever comes to your mind. Then I just like to make marks. These are the new color tools that are water soluble. Just randomly putting down some colors. These are the first, these are in the first layer, so they will be covered up, but sometimes when I'm scratching into the surface, you can see them in the scratches, so it's always a surprise what's coming out. This is the graphite stick and I like to get shapes in there that I see so energy is flowing just to warm up my head and hand <laughs> Then I'm going in with some darker shades. I like to work from or in order to get depth into the piece, there is lots of dark shapes and I'm adding the light to this later so I'm slowly building up. I'm using some of my darker colors. And I like to use this very used stiff brush to, and to scrub in the paint. I've got a rag to blot. Okay. Then there's lots of darks over here. Using water to activate the colors. Here's some darks too. board is there's a layer of gesso underneath and this give, gives some great textures into the piece. Then I 
to go in with my white, my, with my gesso. And I put the gesso down because to protect the, the paper underneath because I'm really scrubbing hard. So Now I need to let it dry. I like to let it drip. Now it's fairly dry, so I can work on my next layer. Now I'm kind of I'm looking on, on the colors I see. There's lots of browns and greens, dark greens. And there is some like purple, purpley color in the shadow. So that's a nice first layer. So I'm gonna go with to mix some greens I can take my chart to decide what I'm looking for I'm going to make something like that See how it goes. fairly transparent so I will mix in some some of the gesso to make it more opaque Now I'm just kind of looking where the weight is or the shapes, the greens. And when you sc 
scratch hard. There is the layers underneath. You can see. Okay, not too much. And I'm covering some of it. like to go in with some dark blue covering up everything just let it peek shine through the other layers oh I really like this color so I'm watering down and spreading it over the piece When you water down the paint, in it pools, it starts to pools in the scratch marks I made before. Okay, that's a nice layer. So let's get in some Let's see. I'm gonna let it dry and then go to the next layer. Okay, this, la this layer is dry, fair, fairly dry, and I really like the the darkness and the texture and now I'm going in with some color pencils to get some marks down and I like to draw some leaf shapes There are flowers there or that have like some of this color here. So I would like to bring this into the piece with color pencils and to get some variety in the marks I make.
very loose and playful. Just get some energy into the piece. Okay. And I'm doing this intuitively, but when often I use colors on the opposite side of the color wheel, like the yellow with the purple and the oranges with the green. And this is oftentimes what you find and see in nature as well. These beautiful color combinations. Just getting in some. There's lots of lots of yellows there, different like the tips of the plants that are the uh, the sun is shining on. So. Or you can use your non-dominant hand. Okay, and some greens. I like to mix it all together and to have some of the color in there from my previous layers. I really like, like that it unifies the piece. So let's have a look at this color. Yeah, I like it. So let's get in some of this. Now I'm just kind of letting me inspire. I'm not replicating the inspiration. I just getting in some. these blobs I have to thin it out I use the matte medium for this to get some just taking away some of the paint here the matte medium makes the layer more transparent. And putting on some of the marks. I'm using the big brush to cover some space. The matte medium comes out 
uh, when you put it, take it out of the tube, it's white, but it dries transparent, so it's really nice. So I'm I'm mixing in some of this blue. dog doesn't agree with my decision. <laughs> I just like to you make these marks. It can be anything really. It reminds me of the bark I saw. I like to use a smaller brush. To vary strokes some white. in some light. Kind of look where the brighter spots are. Taking away some of them. into it. And when I think it's too much, I'm going in with the brush to smooth some of it out. try again. Before working on the next layers I'm putting on some protecting cream for my hands because I like to use uh, to finger paint so that my skin and body is protected from 
the colors so now I've got a great base to work on um, I'd like to turn everything around and have a look If I'm continuing like this or like that, it's really good to step back sometimes or just go away from the painting, go for a walk or just get some distance and another pro uh, perspective um, to help to see your painting with fresh eyes and then to decide what's gonna be next so i'm yeah i'm continuing this way so got a little pocket color wheel <coughs> I like to use and it's really interesting to see the colors how they relate to each other and in this inspiration there's this beautiful greens yellow greens blue greens the a, bright, um, a large range of different greens and on the opposite side there is oranges red oranges and blues and oranges so i really like that this can be a great help too to decide when you're not sure what color to pick next now I would like to go in with the sandpaper to get some more textures on these brighter spots to lighten it up So when I go in with my next layer, um, this will show up this brighter spot. I'm not sending everywhere, just on some places. Let's see, there is lots of light down here and there is lights up here and in the trees so that's it and now I'm going in with the green gold I would like to glaze over the whole piece. It's a fantastic color. It's very transparent and it just 
unifies the piece when applying on the whole on on the piece. I'm even using some matte medium to thin it down. get a really thin glazing coat I'm applying it thicker on some spots on of the painting where I see the brighter greens down here. some up here there's lights up there I need to let that layer dry it's a very thin layer so it's drying quickly and in the meantime I yeah I can do some marks um, let's take the graphite stick and just go in here. I'm just actually, I'm more concentrating on the painting, on the shapes I see, following the shapes, getting in some movement. Just very loose. I know that lots of these marks will be covered up with the next layers, but some of it will show and it's really nice. Then I've got the uh, neo color too. I have to be. Um, I ha I'm going in with the blues because these are water soluble, and when I'm putting in yellow, and I want to have blue on my next layer, then yeah, when it mixes, I'm gonna have green instead of blue. So. I'm sticking with the blues. Getting some of it in here. Not really thinking much about where to put marks or what kind of marks, just being in the moment and putting something down. Yeah. I'm gonna stay with the darker blues and now. 
dry. Now I will let's have a look at the blues. I really like this manganese blue. It's this one and it's transparent so that would be a good choice to have some of these in here. Let's see. some matte medium to thin it out some more. And now I'm uh, I would like to apply some of the blues some bigger parts of the blues up here yeah i'm gonna take my hands to rub it in and what i really like is with the scratching and the sanding there is um, textures and marks in the paint and when you're rubbing it in it shows so I really like that up here really messy but so much fun <laughs> I, I just yeah, I just like smooshing around the paint it out a little bit down here with some blue
just adding some water. When I add water, it starts to to pool on some uh, in some parts of the painting or in the marks. I really like that. So let's get in some water here, and I like to have some drips. So. Oh, I don't, I have to be careful not to smash it on the table too much, so. <laughs> so now that uh, I added the, the blues, I would like to integrate some of the colors I see here. These orangey, brown, yellow. Um, color and it's down here but also up here in in the trees and the branches so let's have a look I really like this this mixture and this peachy one so yeah I'm going to go with the, the green gold I already have on my palette and this is the Chronochrome Nicolazzo gold. Oftentimes I'm not changing my my painting water, so it's kind of this muddy muddy water, but I <laughs> I really like to yeah, tone my paints down a bit. So let's have a look. What we get when we mix these together. I would like to add some gesso to the mixture. like to have it more more orangey so let's put in some Indian yellow and perhaps a lizarin Crimson.
and I just go on mixing until I like the color or it feels good to apply the color so yeah I like that So I'm starting down here. I would like to keep this corner. I, I really like what I see here. So I'm going to start over here. Just holding my pencil and my brush very loose um, I need to s stand I can see better so I would like to put up some of it here and I like this corner very much so I'm leaving that Changing my brush, putting in some, some more red. Let's get some color in here. So, oh wow, I really like this one. There is this red flower, flowers down there. Yeah, just get, just, I'm actually, just putting it where I where it feels good to have it so changing my brush size to get a variety of marks oh there's some blooms
take some of this peachy color here to create that and I'm not really replicating the image so I'm not just putting in down here I'm just putting it where it feels good and that's our neighbor's dog little dog barking I really uh, would like to put in some more of the more of the pink. Oh wow, that's a great color. That's some annoying barking. Jeez. And actually that's my process to just add layers, scratch into layers. Take something away. And kind of be aware of it feels good when you when I put it on on the painting so barking or playing with the cat which is annoyed the cat okay so I would like to put in some what do I have here <coughs> some purple There is often times there is a uh, purpley color in, in the shadow. So that's nice. And it's a great way to cover up some of the marks. I'm not that crazy about. So. I'm just having a look where the darks are. be 
being careful not to muddy everything up. So there's definitely some drying time needed here. Yeah. like to integrate some smaller smaller some marks with a smaller brush there's this can you see this from the hills the shadows I see some of it here also, so let's get that in. And I really like to have some calmer spaces in the painting. So here in, in this area and down here, just so the eyes can just um, be there and rest a little bit. It's very, yeah noisy and wild <laughs> around here but i'm gonna tone it down in my next layer with some watercolors and first i would like to put in some of that peachy some more of that peachy color. I'm putting it in here.
depending on how you put down the brush, how you make the mark, it gives some very cool effects from the brush. to let it dry and then in the next layer we can get in with some watercolor I'm gonna take some of it away can use some paper to blot take some of it away take some some of the paint is dry and on other parts it's not dry and then it takes the layers that are beneath I'm integrating some watercolors these are colors I really like and it's a they um, <clears throat> granulate beautifully it gives some very nice special textures when when they dry so and it helps me to just unify the piece and to push back some of these very yeah I would say kind of noisy loud colors so yeah I would like to show you this and I'm gonna use I think the the hematite genuine these are made from Um, this is a crystal hematite yeah yeah anyways I would like to use this because it's um, a lighter shade but it gives some great granulation and some depth depth to the piece so Let's pull some of it out and I'm losing, using lots of water and to spread it across. could prob probably use a smaller brush to <laughs> get in in here so yeah get that out pigment out Now let's get 
across the whole painting with lots of water and it gives them new dimension to the painting. I really like to do that. And let's have some of the undersea green to get some of the green in here. Okay, there's too much here. I'd like to get some of it away. Get some more of the pigment in here, not just water, more pigment. Yeah, better. And then I would like to preserve some of the brighter colors, like. Um, some of this peachy color. Now I would like to put on some of the last layers and finish off the piece with some mark making, some line work. I So far I, I like the colors, the textures, the shapes. Um, I'm missing some line work. So I'm going to put this in um, with, I'm using colored pencils and I'm choosing my colors based on what I already have on my paintings. So let's see, I'd like to go with this yellow, some of the blues, the peachy color, just to intensify some of the, the colors and yeah like this warm color okay When you go in, um, when you
you hold the pencil like this and go slightly over then it just um, takes the color on some areas like that green somehow oh I really like that blue so let's get in some of the blue here that's too bright so this really looked great so I'm just going in there finding some shapes or going over darker areas so it stands out a bit Then I would like to get in with the graphite stick. This is a little bit, the mark is a little bit shiny, so I like the contrast. And what I put on some highlights but you will I really have to be careful some oil pastels just to get some be careful not to overwork it so let's just that 
fabulous that is not really matching so this is an oil stick you have to peel off the skin that's um, building when it dries so I would like to put some highlights on some spots where I see lighter Where see lights reflecting? I'm rubbing it in a little bit. It dries a little bit shiny, so. Spreading it out a bit. Yeah, there's the brown. The brown oil pastel and it's mixing, that's not what I really plan on doing so look. some of it so that it's not a solid shape here So I'm going to put in some very last greens and then I'm fini finishing it off with a coat of watercolors and yeah, I would like to have some brighter green this would really be nice in here so that's the paints gray with the yellow
have a color I like and I'm using quite a lot of water in the hope of uh, that it's repelling um, that it gets repelled on the oil sticks and oil pastel I applied so let's have a look I would like to get it in here I have to thin it out more, even more. More just like a watercolor. There we go, there are some marks I like, so just to get in some more a bit more of the green. off what too much It was, for me, it was feeling a bit too dark and I was missing some of the, yeah, just some colorful spots like this peach and from the flowers this pink. So I integrated this and I just want to push it a little bit back and that it's integrated in the piece and not standing sitting on top of the other layers so um, I need to decide on the blues or the greens I don't want to darken it up too much yeah um, let's see how this lunar blue looks on top or the green yeah I'm gonna go with some of the blue because we are living on the blue planet so let's have some blue in here Be 
careful not to go over everything again because there's marks with the water soluble water soluble media I'm gonna take some of the hem hematite applied these last colors I went over with the hair dryer very hot and it, it cracked the paint the acrylic paint up a little bit so that's nice too Okay. That's the part I I really like is to, to reveal to take off the tape. do some drying and then yeah let's take off mm -hmm. I'm taking it off right now now I'm gonna take it off oh okay so what I learn is Although uh, I'm very excited to rip that tape off, I'm slowly and carefully rolling it away so it's not damaging my paper too much. getting the tape off I think it's because um, I used the hair dryer to dry the layers in between I'm normally not using the hair dryer to do that it's just to save some time for the tutorial so yeah
thank you so much for watching and being part of creating earth sketchy earth with me so i really enjoyed it and hope to see you on sketchy <laughs>